Hello everyone, welcome back to Hashtag from Macarver's channel. If you watched the previous video, you now understand how the camshaft lobe is designed. This video is a continuation, and there are two camshaft lobes this time. You have the intake and exhaust, and the reason why is because now you're going to understand how the configuration of them is going to affect the performance and the personality of the engine. We're going to be discussing duration, load separation angle, which is usually referred to as overlap. We're going to explain dual pattern camshafts, and we're going to have a couple examples of different camshafts and how their configuration affects the power output of an engine. So to give you clearer vision, I'm going to bring the camera up close, just like I always do, so you can see this better. So let's get started. Alright, so now that the camera is up close, let's discuss what's on the image. Right now, this is the position of the camshaft with a cylinder at top dead center. This distance right here between the lobes, that's the lobe separation angle, which is normally called overlap. This over here is the peak lobe lift, which obviously is the top of the nose of the lobe, and this is the center line. Before we start with the subject of duration, let's touch up on the lift, valve lift. Remember, when you're dealing with an engine that has rocker arms, the lift of the camshaft has to be multiplied by the rocker arm ratio, whether it's 1.5, 1.6, and so forth. Let's start with duration. Duration is measured in degrees, which are the degrees of the crankshaft rotation. And obviously, this duration refers to the length of time that the valves are going to be open because of the camshaft lobes. For a mild engine, the duration tends to be anywhere from 260 degrees to 280 degrees, and that is the rotation of the crankshaft, not the camshaft. And also remember that this duration right here, it can be broken down into two, because you have the advertised duration, and you have the duration at 50 thousandths of an inch, which it would be lower. So if you have a 280 degree of advertised duration, the duration of 50 thousandths it could only be 250, 245. And I mentioned in a previous video that the camshaft manufacturers will give you those specs so you can always look at them. Okay, so let's move on to the load separation angle, which is referred to as overlap. That's the next subject. As explained on the image, is the distance in between the two center lines. And this overlap is going to cause that both intake and exhaust valves will remain open at the same time for a very brief period of time which it would be on degrees, right, of crankshaft rotation. A tighter angle, meaning these two being together, is going to have a rougher idle, and it's going to have kind of a crazier sound, than a camshaft design that has a wider lobe separation angle because the time that they're open together is going to be a lot less. And when the valves are open at the same time, because you're bleeding compression, you're going to lose horsepower, and that tends to be a lower RPMs mostly. Once you go higher RPMs, like I said in the previous video, things are happening so fast that it's not noticeable anymore. Common duration angles could be anywhere from 106 degrees to 112 degrees. And that's the generality, obviously, right? Every camshaft manufacturer is going to design it differently, depending on what this engine is supposed to do, what kind of profile it's going to have, what kind of personality, so to speak. This is generality, just like this is generality, generality, it's a guideline. Now let's move on to dual pattern camshafts. What is a dual pattern camshaft and why do they exist? A dual pattern camshaft is going to have different duration for the intake and exhaust valves. Usually the exhaust camshaft lobe is going to have a longer duration. So if you ever saw a spec on a camshaft, let's say they had 280, 292. Okay, just an example. So you're looking at a catalog and it's telling you, hey, the duration is 280, 292. And you're like, well, what is that supposed to mean? That means that the duration of the intake lobe or the time that this camshaft lobe is going to keep the intake valve open is 280 degrees of crankshaft rotation. And you have the exhaust camshaft lobe that is going to maintain the exhaust valve open for 292 degrees. And then you may have the question, well, why is the exhaust longer than the intake? Forget about the exhaust. Well, not necessarily. It's more likely that the exhaust is going to be the restricted part. If you don't have free-flowing headers, like if you have manifolds, then you have catalytic converters, and all the shape that this exhaust is going to have, you name it, it may create restrictions to where if you enable this valve to stay open a little longer, you'll be able to get most of it out. So some cam manufacturers will have dual pattern camshafts. It comes down to what is this engine going to do, what is equipped with, and what is the best camshaft that will be suitable for the entire combination. 
That way it enhances what's already in the engine instead of hindering it. So now that we have this information down, I'm going to bring up a couple examples just like I said at the beginning of the video. I'm going to move the camera down so I can write the information here and it can make sense to you. That way you can have a good guideline when choosing the cam. So let me move it down. So now the cool part. We're going to have a couple different examples and in order to avoid having the examples for every engine that was ever built, we're going to have one of the most common engines. So for this example we're going to go everything stock except the camshaft. We have a 600 CFM carburetor, dual plane intake manifold, regular exhaust manifolds for exhaust, and 9 to 1 compression ratio. So pretty much stock, same gears as the vehicle came equipped with, you name it. We're only modifying the camshaft. So with that in mind, the camshaft needs to be very conservative so it doesn't ruin the low bottom end and it gives you some performance but it maintains good drivability and fuel economy. So let's see, what kind of specs should a camshaft have? Well, let's take a look. So when it comes to valve lift range, you know, because it's going to be a range, every camshaft maker is going to have a different one. So it's going to be anywhere from 445 thousandths to 460 thousandths. And remember, this engine right here has rocker on, so you have to multiply the rocker on ratio to get to this number. Unless on the catalog that you're looking at, it's telling you that this lift is already taking into account your rocker arms. Otherwise, this number is going to be a lot lower. Then we go to the duration. So, advertised duration. It's going to be anywhere between 260 degrees to 290 degrees of advertised duration. Now remember, there's a duration of 50 thousandths of an inch. So duration at 50 thousandths. Just like I said before, that's going to be lower. 210 degrees, which obviously is lower, 224 degrees of duration of 50 thousandths of an inch. And that's the range of a camshaft desirable for a mostly stock engine. Last but not least, we have the low separation angle. Which is overlap. That's the time the valve will be open at the same time. 180 degrees, 112 roughly, depending on the camshaft manufacturer. So this numbers right here is for a small block Chevy, mostly stock. These are the numbers that you will be looking at when choosing a camshaft that will give you a little bit more performance and you're not going to have to be driving it at 4,000, 5,000 RPMs to feel any difference. You know, you can just continue driving it the way you always do and you'll be able to feel it. So these are some general numbers that you can use as a guideline. What we're going to do now, we're going to still use the same engine we're going to have some modifications to the engine and it's going to need a different camshaft because it's going to make it perform differently. So we still have the same small block but now we have a 750 CFM carburetor we have a single plane manifold Let me break this down intake manifold by the way if you don't know what manifold we're talking about we have a 3000 stall speed torque converter we have anywhere from 10 to 1 to 11 to 1 compression and if possible you have different gears like maybe you have 411s or something along that nature depending on what you want to do you know this would be for drag racing obviously so so the engine itself is still the same except that you have different pistons or different heads because you just brought the compression from the 9 to 1 that was stock so either 10 to 1 or 11 to 1 depending on you know what you ended up doing so now that we have this engine in this configuration 
this torque converter, this gears, what kind of camshaft range are we looking for? So on the valve lift, range, anywhere from 505 thousandths of an inch lift all the way to 555 thousandths of an inch because, and of course you will make sure that you check your clearances, make sure nothing happens, but on the pistons there would be a recess for the valve, you would have different springs, or you would have a machine shop that already made this possible so you have no problems when it comes to coil bond. On the duration, if you go to the advertised duration, Two hundred eighty-eight degree of advertised duration, all the way to three hundred six, roughly, and then duration of fifty thousands, and last but not least, we have the overlap or low separation. which obviously is a lot tighter than the previous camshaft that had anywhere from 108 to 112. So these numbers on this camshaft right here, they would complement an engine that has these components right here. So when choosing a camshaft, it's very important to make sure that the whole thing works together. Otherwise, like I said earlier, you're going to make it worse instead of improving it. You know, if you don't know that you have to have higher compression, you have to have a different torque converter, you have to have a different intake system, different exhaust system. Here, I don't think I wrote it down, but, you know, let's say you have headers, you know, free flow and exhaust. So all of those things need to work together. But now you definitely have a really good starting point and make a really wise decision when